Welcome YouTube friends and family to today's edition of the Wellness Homesteader. And y'all, I am really excited because I have had an idea about a little video series that I want to do. It's something I'm going to do anyway, so I thought, why not bring you all along? What is it? Well, you have to stay tuned to find out. <laughs> you all have gotten the same reprieve from the miserably hot and humid weather and guys it's just my ice maker making ice in the background sorry about that noise it has been amazing and it is now 59 degrees it is 8 15 in the morning i've already done all my chores and been to big town and gotten groceries but the reason i wanted to bring this to you today one to have a little fun y'all like grocery hauls I am so ding dang nosy. I want to see all the things that people get because I might need it. I've always been kind of obsessed with grocery hauls. So let's start with that first. And I will be sharing along the way what my idea is for this new video series that I think can benefit anyone, whether you're into homesteading or not. All right. So let me tip you down here. And I'm not super great at this, y'all. So I spent a hundred and seventeen dollars a hiccup and 40 cents y'all food is just outrageous especially meat i don't eat a ton of meat but i have a couple recipes i want to try upcoming i like using my crock pot or my sun oven when i'm doing a lot of canning because it's minimal effort for some you know healthy proteins so the first thing i got was this angus uh, beef chuck roast chuck pot roast well, it's either a chuck or a pot. Y'all, this is eight bucks a pound, so I paid $17.22. So this is quite a splurge for me. Right now, I'm gonna freeze it, not quite ready to use it. I will say Walmart does have the uh, 8515 grass-fed organic ground beef with no antibiotics, no hormones. But y'all, it's like almost $7. So I got that meat. And then my regular old standby chicken thighs because they cook well in the crock pot without drying out and they also are good in my sun oven. Hang on a minute guys, I hear some buck bucking going on. Y'all, today's the first day I've let the big girls and Winona together. Um, she's just growing so fast and she's warmed up to me tremendously. It's easy to catch her, pick her up, all of those things. But the first thing Fancy Ray did was go over and peck her. <laughs> I'm like, you don't do that to your sisters. Anyway, there'll be more chicken delight to come. Not to eat, just to talk about. Um, I did buy some fish sticks because that was one of the things I keep in my freezer because I can put them in the air fryer. Now, are they the most nutritious things? No, no, they are not. But you can have six for 22 grams of carbs. So I'm trying to stay in that 35 per meal range. So this is a good quick treat for me as well. The last, nope, not the last meat. I love Jimmy Dean extra hot and spicy sausage. And then the final thing for a high protein stack that I got is some um, free sliced rotisserie chicken, but even half a pound was 538. I know, and it's not like I'm buying top brand, right? Okay, in the dairy-ish area, I got half a gallon of cow's milk, full whole milk. What I don't use for recipes, I can also put um, in and make some yogurt starter, or make some yogurt with a yogurt starter. My half and half for my coffee. And then guys, I know I can make biscuits, but we're talking about ways to get through still eating, eating things I like, but um, ways to get through the canning season or the food preservation season when you don't feel like cooking. Now, one thing about these is a biscuit has 25 grams of carbs. So if you're going to have a biscuit, you need to have low carb, high protein for the rest of my meal under my um, guidelines. And if I didn't say this, the light um, string cheese. And guys, this makes a good snack um, for me on my eating 
diabetic plan, take um, some chicken, wrap it around a piece of string cheese. So you're getting that high protein burst and not a bunch of carbs. All right. Y'all, I probably have more bread making videos than you can shake a stick at, but I did buy two loaves of bread. Why? Because I don't want to have to make bread right now. <laughs> um, I sound like I'm incredibly lazy, don't I? But when I get into the mode of food preservation and lots of gardening and lots of outdoor work, I really just have less enjoyment in the cooking process because sometimes I just need to be fed. I did get some um, packaged Italian dressing mixes, one chili because I kind of want some chili. <laughs> some mushrooms, a veg I don't grow, hamburger buns for the hamburger meat, for a recipe, two cans of French onion soup. I did buy the name brand, Campbell's, because the other one um, had no expiration date and it was like a pop top. So, you know, I paid a quarter more per can, but that's okay. Y'all, I eat when I really want something sweet or I get up late and I'm on the run. Like I have to go to an appointment and I have something, you know, to, on my to-do list. These have 17 grams of protein, two grams of sugar and 24 carbs. So I can actually have this with some protein for a quick breakfast meal. I needed some decaffeinated black tea, some light bulbs, some band-aids. If you all are wondering in case you catch a glimpse, um, I had ripped off my big toenail on the chicken coop last December and it had pretty much grown back until I dropped a cinder block on my toe and the second to now fell off. So I'm trying to keep it covered just because it looks ugly. All right, and then the final thing, not for me, but shh, don't tell Ben. Um, I'm going to start stocking up on some holiday type things that have a long shelf life because it, I don't like to shop. And so I thought, well, I'm gonna go ahead and get this now. So let me red up all of this, get the cold stuff, frozen stuff, all that put away. I'm gonna sit down real quick and I want to tell you what my idea is. And then there is actually part two to this video that will be coming because you all might have done some, some early Halloween slash fall shopping that I want to share with you. So I hope you'll stay tuned. Well, y'all, I think we've achieved peace. Well, <laughs> maybe not because she just scared Winona. So there's little Winona back there and she is so much smaller than Fancy Ray and Jolene. Um, Fancy Ray pecked her a couple times and I scolded her and she seems to have stopped. So I think we are very close, at least during the day, to leaving them out together. So that's just a little update unrelated to the grocery haul. All right, oh, well, I got the groceries all put away, took a little rest, played with the chickens. And so I am so happy that Miss Winona is getting along so well. And she also is a lot less afraid of me so I think, you know, it bears watching pretty closely. I'm going to keep them separated at night because Winona's too small to roost and broody <laughs> violets in there. And she can be kind of cranky. She'll blow up her feathers at me when I go to take the eggs that she's stolen. And I'm always like, don't you blow up at your mama. <laughs> but anyway, y'all, here's my thoughts. And I can't take total credit for it, but I love the idea. So I like to watch J. Morrell Stewart. She has, I, I always get it wrong. I think she has nine children. And if I'm off, um, I apologize because feeding her family is part of her focus, but not showing her children. So anyway, she is actually, she has like, and refrigerators and freezers downstairs. When you're feeding a family of 11, I'm sure you have to have that much. I have far too much for myself, I think. That's why this year I've kind of cut back on um, my planting as far as for preservation. I will do some, but that way I have um, some to eat fresh on through the summer, which will give me a little relief from my grocery bills. So the reason I did a grocery haul today, I probably haven't been to the grocery in like like a month, 
<clears throat> month, just saying, <laughs> because I keep a lot on hand and I do have fresh produce during harvest season. However, it's time for me to do a very deep cleaning and Jay Morrell kind of, I don't know, inspired me to do it. So what she is doing, a little different than what I'm going to do because I don't feed the volume of people. And she also has people with different dietary needs. I know what I can eat. And then I also like to make things for other people. So I have to keep some things in stock for, you know, baking and treats and holiday themed things that are not necessarily something I'm going to eat. It's something I'm going to do for the channel and then, you know, spread the love to the neighbors or my son or how, however it works. So what would you all think about this? I think it's a great idea. I need to go through three major areas. Now, as y'all know, <laughs> my refrigerator in the kitchen went <laughs> So that's all cleaned out. There's not a whole lot in it, honestly, because um, what was in the freezer was completely thawed and had to go. So mostly what I have is my upright deep freezer in the garage, which is fairly well organized, but I know I have some preserved fruits and veg that I need to start rotating through. So what Jay Morrell did is just brought up like, because she does, the big batch cooking and then freezes it. You would have to with a busy life and nine kids. Whew. Wonder why she didn't figure out what caused that. <laughs> I hope y'all laughed at that. I think having nine children would be a blessing. I don't know if I would be equipped for that, however. So she's also looking at her grocery store in the basement is what she calls it. And she's going through things. Now, what I can say about Jay Morrell is with the volume of people, she's turning over a lot more food. Um, she has to do a lot more planning. You know, if I don't feel like cooking, I, I don't have to eat or I can hard boil an egg or something. You know, I can make it really simple for me because I'm not feeding children. But what I would like to do is go through the deep freeze, see what we have left compared to what we have in the garden what I still want to preserve. So far, the only thing in the freezer I've preserved from this year is the broccoli. The next thing I wanna do, and this is for those of you who are new, and y'all, I hope you can't hear that radio in the background, but I'm not willing to turn it off. So I have two of these, oh, wait, no, it goes this way. Two of these double cabinets that are full of home canned items. Is that on, oops, sorry guys. Is that on my home canned goods, you might ask? Why no? No, it is not. And there's a reason for this, you all. Um, honestly, my mom passed away last June 29th. If it wouldn't have been for her fall, hip fracture, diabetes complications, heart complications from all the trauma to her body, my mom could have, in reality, gone on for years like that. Um, so I continued up until the time my mom passed making things that I knew that she enjoyed. And I, mom wouldn't take her pills. We had to hide them in jelly. So I would take a four ounce jar of jelly every single week. She would go through that. Well, now I've got all this jam that I'm not going to use. I will share with people. I'm not just gonna throw it away. I have some home canned goods that I'm probably, the wisest thing I could do is just divest myself. If it's three years or greater, I need to take a serious look. So I love to can, and sometimes I was canning things that maybe aren't my favorite or didn't turn out to be my favorite. That might be a better way to put it. So one example, I made some homemade French onion soup not a fan. <laughs> so I need to divest myself. It's always good to all, I should do it once a quarter, but usually it's twice a year, to go through, check all your seals, um, get rid of anything that, you know, doesn't look right, um, has come unsealed, that type thing. And then another big thing for me is FIFO, you know, the first in, first out. So making sure that the most recent canning is in the back and the oldest is in the front. So that's area number two are my home canned goods. Is this all my home canned goods? Why no, no it is not because I ran out of room. So I have some in the pantry room, 
which I love my pantry, but y'all, I'm just going to be honest. I keep, you know, I'll come home from the grocery and I'm kind of tired and I bought some extras and I just put them on the shelf. It's gotten pretty unorganized. And also I know there are things that are so far past their best by date that it really doesn't make sense to leave them on my shelf because I'm obviously not going to eat them. They obviously can't be donated to our food pantry because some of them, well, when I cleaned out my fridge, I had the uh, condiments in there that it expired in 2019. Just saying. I like a lot of condiments though. So I wanna do those three areas. Talk about organization, talk about par levels, um, how I determine how much I'm going to need, those type of things. So I think if you're new to prepping or you just kind of want to stock up, that might be a good video for you to watch. Y'all think my mouth's still numb. And thank you all for your kind wishes. Um, I didn't tell you ahead of time about my dental work because I, th I knew I had it, but I didn't think it was going to be that big of a deal. Well, let me tell you all. Starting in September, I have like six appointments in a row. I'm getting um, two implants probably that won't be finished up until like January-ish. And um, I have a tooth that needs a new crown. So I've got a lot of appointments coming up. I will try to record ahead and not miss so much. This is just, but I've been off my schedule. Can y'all tell that? And I don't think it's grief. I think, I think it's my age. <laughs> um, I've had a lot of trouble with my blood sugar that isn't resolved yet. And I, I don't know what to do about that. I don't think that's so much why I feel bad. Um, I've been having a lot of lupus type and arthritic type flares. Okay, enough about that. So you're excited, y'all? I think it'll be a really good thing. And then along the way, I won't just be like dusting and you have to watch me dust. Um, you know, we can start planning, well, okay, you need to eat this. Here's a couple recipes you might try if you have the hiccups <laughs> and you're overstock. Y'all, we have so many new people. We're almost up to 7,100. I'm so excited. And I just love that so many new people are jumping on. So some of the things I might say, you might be like, I don't know what you're talking about. So um, if you ever have questions, y'all, I read every single comment. I answer every single comment. Um, I respect the time that you give me and I try not to, you know, have clickbait or waste your time. So drop me a comment below. What do you think about doing, I'm gonna say a sort of pantry challenge in preparation for final harvest because not only will I do tomatoes, beans, and peppers, I may choose to do a few things from the farmer's market if I see holes. I don't need jelly. <laughs> Hit me up if you need jelly. Y'all, I don't really eat jelly, but my mom did, and so I kept making it. So I will pass some out <laughs> to friends and family that don't lock the door when they see me coming because I truly hate to see it go to waste, some of which was just canned last year, and I know I'm probably not gonna eat it. All right, so y'all, stay tuned for a minute. Let me go find my sippy cup because I am so thirsty. And then I have something super cute and cool to show you. So if you're new, you may not know this about me. I am a lover of all things autumn, fall, Thanksgivingness is, and I love Halloween. And I'm going to explain a little bit about my viewpoint on Halloween because not everyone celebrates. So stay all right, y'all. I may be moving around a little bit in this. So I've shared with my existing subscribers, but I want to say a word to my new subscribers. You know, if you in your heart feel Halloween is not right for you and that you shouldn't celebrate, don't. I'm not here to try to sell my belief system um, on Halloween or to say, well, that's just being ridiculous or it's sinful or it's right. I'm not here to do that. My take on Halloween really comes more from a retro viewpoint. So when I was very young, we did trick or treat a few times, but then things got very dangerous and we no longer trick or treated. I always loved back to school, autumn, plaid, <laughs> leaves changing color, pumpkins. That's why I grow so many. I just loved 
that season. And I associate it with a lot of vintage type memories. You gotta remember I was born in 1961. I'm not into, <laughs> let me decorate the house in devils. Let me play Ouija board every night. So th there's where I don't cross the line to me. It's I'm not worshiping anything evil. I just enjoy it and it can be really fun. The other thing is y'all, I have so many <laughs> fall Halloween decorations. It's unreal. So I technically will actually do more decorating for fall than I will for Christmas. And that may seem backwards, but that's just the way I've kind of done it. So let's, let's look at the first thing I bought. And I, I'm gonna be honest with y'all. I got this off Amazon. I will link this item because I wanted a Halloween themed quilt to put over my couch. And this is actually pretty nice looking. I started to cancel it and they wouldn't let me. I have no idea what this is. This looks like sheets. Well, how come I got sheets? I don't know about the sheets. So let me see if I can show you. It's very soft, almost reminds me of like a watercolor. It's never gonna go back in that bag. So there are witches, um, cauldrons. Here's a broom, there are bats, there's poison. So this is neutral enough, even with the amount of blue and green I have in here, I think it will look absolutely fine. Down here, here's a pillow cover, um, pumpkins and ghosts, <laughs> what are those things called? But you know, y'all, I didn't know about the sheets. I, I will look at the listing. Okay, so here's the pillow shams and a throw pillow. Um, this is queen, so if I decide to use it on my bed, I can. I have a queen size bed, but I already have a Halloween bed spread that I love. So this, this was new and Y'all excuse me for stepping off to the side. Um, one of the games I play um, when it gets to be fall time <laughs> is how long can I delay before I turn on the heat? Because it seems like once I turn it on, I, I'm just cold. <laughs> so this might be nice to have. My couch is like a cream color you can see in this chair is as well. This will be nice to have. Now, I will go ahead and wash like, not not the comforter, but like the pillow slips and things. But I think it's gonna make for a really cute decoration. They also had a version of fall. Y'all let me check the price really fast. Just a second, y'all. Right, Sorry about that. Right now, and you know Amazon is, changes price prices all the time. I did not pay as much as it is now. Right now it's $99.99 for the queen. But you get a flat sheet, a fitted sheet, two pillowcases, two pillow shams, a throw pillow cover, and this comforter as well. You know, it's a pretty good deal even at $99. Now I can't speak to the quality of the sheets, but they feel nice and soft, so I haven't actually used them. But y'all, let's get on to our next thing. Okay, hold on. So, <laughs> y'all don't laugh at my bridges. All right. All right. Get this mixed up every time. So y'all just, if you're new, learn to laugh at me. I love QVC's fall harvest Halloween stuff. It's the best. So I saw these and I needed them. So it is um, a little, like a tart lip. You could eat your cereal, you could eat soup, beef stew, whatever. Inside it has a recipe for apple pie, pumpkin pie. Oh, look how cute this one is. The pumpkin pie's got a little Frankenstein. Um, chocolate chip pecan pie, and cherry pie. Now, can I eat any of those things? Why no, no I cannot. I, but I really wanted to have some Halloween themed dishes. 
not only for decorating, but for using. I do have a set of Debbie Mum mugs. Well, actually, I think I have two mugs and the plates, the little plates, like dessert plates. So, you know, maybe eating on dessert plates, but that's okay. So that came from QVC, and it's either Temptations or Placecake. I hate the sound of styrofoam. All right. Temptations. Taste stations is a cat treat. That's what I can stuff with. So y'all, I've seen this a hundred times. It they have a lot of stuff on sale, like preseason. And I'm telling you, y'all, if you watch any decor channels or any shopping hall channels, Hobby Lobby, which they don't sell Halloween, they sell fall, sell fall. They've been full on fall and it's already 40% off. I'm trying to stay on a Hobby Lobby because I spend too much money. So I'm sure you've all seen this. This just, it screws together here. And then there's like a middle, there's a bar. So there's little hooks. So what is this for? It never goes back in the box the way it came out. This actually is like for treats or for a meal. It has these cute little serving bowls that go in here and then it hangs. So it's kind of like a witch, I'm, I'm doing really bad. Get around there, like a witch's cauldron type thing. So there's a mummy. Let me see what else. <laughs> Y'all, I just made sure it wasn't in pieces, like felt of everything. I literally had had not taken this out of the box because I wanted to share it with y'all. There's one that's like a Frankenstein that's green and black. And then this one, oh, it's just a kitty that's orange in the center. This will be Frankie's favorite. So, you know, it, you could put nuts, you can put um, candies, if you're, you know, having guests and you want to have like a dip bar or a topping bar, this is perfect. So, I'm shocked that all went back in there. Probably the last time it ever will. <laughs> so, that was also a QVC on sale by. And then my final QVC purchase. I couldn't resist these guys. Look how cute they are. So they're, they're little, um, I'm gonna call them treat dishes. But look at this, look at the detail. Really, really nice quality uh, made in China. <laughs> so these are kind of a complement to those cauldrons, if you will. And then I think this one's just a, yeah, it's just an orange one. But it's super cute and it has feet. So my suggestion to you, if you're in the market for what's hot and new, you best get shopping because it just seems like the holidays get so rushed. And uh, don't forget about QVC. I'm not affiliated. Hit me up, QVC. <laughs> but I've had really good luck with their Temptations products. And I love also their pie dishes. Um, there's something fun about, you know, going to a carry-in through the holiday season or the fall season, a hayride, a cookout, you know, whatever it might be and having like themed dishes. So let me get the last box open. This is actually an item that I got from Walmart. Um, it, it came up as suggested and I'm like, are you spying on me? So hold on just a minute. So this is my final item. It is a ceramic Halloween tree. Tree. It's 15 inches. You know, it has little light bulbs like the Christmas trees did. It says trick or treat at the bottom. It takes three AAA batteries. And that was one thing I really liked about this. Not that I love using batteries, but maybe you want this as the centerpiece on your table and you don't want to have to stretch a cord because if you're like me, you might trip, <laughs> yank it off the table. So I'm not gonna pull this one all the way out because I think this is a really good lackness of it. But yeah, that is my early Halloween haul. So 
when do I decorate? <sighs> I have decorated in August, I will admit that. But I try not to decorate until around Labor Day. And then I take down all my patriotic and then I start with the fall and the Halloween. Usually I will put it all up. And then once Halloween passes, I will take the pure Halloween things down and add some Thanksgiving to my regular fall decor. So there's going to be a lot of fun coming up this fall. I'm going to have to get busy on <laughs> I'm like 8,000 things. And, and you know, guys, this is the main reason that my pantry looks like it does because what do I do with this? I don't want to start unpacking all my decorative totes yet. I probably need some new totes. I'll just stick it in the pantry because nobody will see it there. It's just getting a little bit overloaded. So I hope you've enjoyed today's video. Don't forget, make sure you're still subscribed and your notifications are on because I do go live. I'll try to announce it ahead of time, but sometimes I don't have time to um, ahead of time. And I just have the time at the moment, so I do it. Uh, smash that like button. And also, guys, leave me a comment. What do you think about a pre-fall pantry reorganization and clean out, as well as sort of a pantry challenge to get um, your par levels to the right levels before we step into winter? And y'all, I haven't said anything about the sad things that are going on in politics. You know, the um, attempt on former President Trump's life, the loss of life from innocent bystander, you know, all of those things. There is some unrest about presidential election and whether Biden will be or will not be running. And... <laughs> I think as it trickles down, not only can it give us a sense of, and I'm just going to say it, fear, maybe uncertainty, maybe you're second guessing yourself. Um, I know I have, and I've kind of worried about the fact that I didn't plant. I know I planted a lot, but there's a lot of flowers out there too, that I didn't plant as much to preserve as I possibly could have. And now Baker Creek or rareseeds.com is starting to send out, you know, plan your fall garden. And I'm like, should I do a fall garden or shouldn't I? And honestly, y'all, that's one of the reasons I want to do kind of a par level on all of my preserved food and make sure that I have a good understanding of where I'm at because it's so inexpensive to grow, for me, in my opinion, <laughs> I mean, it'd be the same for everybody, but to grow my own food and to preserve it. I enjoy doing both. And, you know, some people say, well, I, gardening doesn't save you money. You can buy a can of green beans at Aldi for, I'll just say 89 cents. I'm kind of making this up. But y'all, um, I seed save. So I can, I bought three tomato plants and the rest were um, started from seed and I have 22 <laughs> Probably a little excessive but what I can say is I know that with all of the meals I can get out of what I'm growing I am saving money I don't have fancy garden equipment I just water it and <laughs> feed it I do grow things organically but I know that what I'm putting in my body number one Number two, I can share with friends and family or those who are less fortunate less fortunate on the food forefront, as well as, you know, turn it into eggs when it's something that I'm not really enjoying or, you know, my girls like turnip greens. So I can feed them turnip greens to supplement their diet. It's very healthy, they're organic, and they turn them into eggs for me. So um, I'm trying not to jump on the I'm afraid wagon. But I do have to say, just with the general business that's going on in the world today, um, we need to stay alert. We need, in my opinion, to be prepared to learn as many self-sufficiency skills as you can so that when times get lean, times get tough, you can keep more money in your pocket for things you might need 
because you're able to produce it, barter for it, sell it um, to offset some of the cost. So I mentioned all the dentist appointments I have. Y'all, the most valuable part of my body is my mouth. <laughs> it isn't even my brain, right? I, I When I get these two implants, that will be a total of seven implants. Now, of course, I didn't get them all at once. And I, I could have had my teeth pulled and gotten dentures, but it's primarily been my back teeth that have given me problems. And um, one implant, because I have to get bone grafting and et cetera, long story. Um, I spent about 30, will have spent about 35,000 just on getting implants. Could have bought a lot of citizens interest for that. But I know that if I need to pull in my belt a little bit, if I need to conserve a little bit, I know that I have food on the shelf. I know that I have the skills and ability to make things I can barter with, whether it's soap products. We haven't made soap in a long time, y'all. I don't do it during um, food preservation season, but we will be doing some of that because I'm almost out of soap completely. Lord forbid I'd have to use source door soap. That's hard to say. All right, guys, I've yakety yacked enough. I hope you've enjoyed today. Don't forget to leave me the comment on the way out. If you have any other ideas of things you'd like to see or just any general questions, because I tend to talk too much, please feel free to leave them below. And again, if it's something private, my email address is always in the description box. Just click on the word more and it'll expand. I do leave a lot of things linked because I get a lot of questions. And I'll be sure to link the um, Halloween bed in a bag, we'll call it. All right, guys, until I see you again, be healthy, be well, be blessed and take care.